we're not sure who Vecna's after. Is he after Max? Is he after Nancy? Is he after Hopper? Who knows? But now, Volume (sighs) 2. Volume 2. This, guys, this is where shit gets real. Like, really real. We stopped it. We found Vec. We found out Vecna was one, and that like he's in the middle of of more or less invading Nancy's head. But he tells us so much more. He shows Nancy the beginning of the end, which is the town of Hawkins being turned upside down, torn apart, torn by, apart by the upside down, by the upside down. Um, and his, his end game that he shows her is him turning the entire world into the upside down so much going on here he shows nancy at the world the the basically the world's going to end starting with hawkins and what she gets out of that because she he lets her live he wants he wants her to tell l like hey i'm coming for you bitch i'm coming for you yeah. yeah so what she gets out of that is basically all of the portals are c- going to be connected like there's got to be there's gonna be four portals there's four tones. Actually, they get they all kind of come up with this. There's four tones of the of the 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 chiming of the clock. Four people, four deaths, four portals. That's all he needs. They kind of brainstorm, and then come up with an idea to try and kill Vecna. And at this because point, because they know where he is. Yep. And at this point, L has her power. She's doing that shit where she finds him, and she's watching them from her mindscape. And uh, yeah. And she she kind of sees what the pro you know what the what the issue is and uh, because of that she decides she knows that they can't they're not gonna be able to feed him so she decides that she's gonna help him she needs to go to them um, of course Papa ain't gonna have none of that Owens is all for it because they they both agreed that that wasn't gonna be a prison you have Nancy Wheeler and the group basically make it a plan to stop Vecna because they don't have they don't have for all for all they know Eleven doesn't have her powers they don't have Eleven yeah. so they're making a plan yeah. on on going to the upside down and basically fucking his world up and Max offers to lure Vecna because he knows that she that he is after her Lucas don't like that and, and distract him so that the others can attack him well it's because Vecna's been more or less prepping her to be the victim yeah, you know she he she's already got all the the secret herbs and spices on her, for uh for for the cooking, uh to be the the fourth victim. But yes, and Lucas ain't having it. Lucas doesn't want that to happen, of course, because he's being overprotective, uh trying to be a good boyfriend, so to speak. And and the whole time, we have Hopper and their gang, at the little hideout where they make that phone call, like you said. And then they're waiting for the call to come back. They're trying to get Yuri to fix. A jet helicopter. A jet helicopter through this time because that's the only thing they could find to get them back, which isn't really going to work, supposedly. And he's just fucking off. Okay, so we're on episode eight, the first episode of volume two. Mm -hmm. Like Wild said, Eleven sees that her friends need her. She needs to be there. She wants to protect them. She wants to take... Vecna out. Papa ain't happening. Ends up locking up Owens, drugging Eleven, putting her back in her room. And as she's coming to, she the U.S. That, military show she has, up. She has that thing on her neck that's supposed to control her. Can control her powers. Yeah. The U.S. military show up and start killing everybody, the place, trying to get to Eleven. So they find uh, Owens, and he's like freaking chained to a, a hot water heater and the surprising part of it is Papa grabs Eleven and escapes with her. Yeah, let me let me yeah. let me just say how stupid this escape plan was. The hatch is where everyone's parked, right out front of the right out front of the, the area. Where like we have and you have like cho- a chopper flying around. How did he think he was going to escape that way? Without a vehicle. And they're in the middle of the Nevada desert. Yeah. And, like, it's not... I'm not kidding. It's, like, maybe about 20 feet away from the entrance. It's not, like... I'd understand maybe if it was, like, a tunnel that led a few miles 
I don't know, southwest, pick a fucking direction. But this was 20 feet! Yeah. This guy's supposed so, to be intelligent! Yeah, so... They get to topside, and the helicopter spots them. Well, they're the sniper in the helicopter. So, Papa takes one to the arm, and he takes one to the leg. Holding, holding L the first two shots. Yeah. I think the first so, two. I, I, he drops yeah. her and lets her go at one point. I'm like, that piece of shit. Well, he... He drops to his knees, and uh, she rolls off to the side whenever he hit his knees, and then they shot him right in the chest. Well, no, he got right up. He bed. got up and and walked a few steps like he was going to leave her. I remember oh, yeah. thinking he was yeah. an asshole for that. Yeah, and then they shot him right in the chest. Yeah, like right through his fucking back. Well, then uh, dead center. You know the the snipers kind of, you know, trying to pinpoint where eleven is. They see the car. They see the 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 uh, pizza car because yeah, that's when yeah. that's when like Will and uh, Mike and and Argyle and and Jonathan, Jonathan. they co- they're they're coming up. They finally found her. Like they had to stop and at one yeah. point and kind of get start her. punking the horn and uh, the sniper came, radio, lost his beat. They they radio into um, the colonel, the lieutenant colonel, and say, "Hey, we've got civilians." We've got civilians coming up. Well, he said take the shot and, on L. He take the shot yeah. on L. And as he pans back over to see where she's at. She gone. Well, you just see her, you know, kind of raise her hand. At that point, you, you know, know they're fucked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just took down the helicopter. At that point, you know they're fucked. Like, she, the, it was a little dramatic. And a little before that, she got we got to see how she got how strong her powers were. She lifted like a ten ton fucking. She lifted Nina. Yeah. The whole device she was inside of like twenty feet in the air and just dropped it. And so we saw that she was a badass again. Um. So that that chopper had no fucking chance in hell. But she, but what she does it real. What's really cool about that is she's fucking with it a little. It's almost like she's playing with her food. Like yeah. it's she's moving around a little bit. They lose their beat and then she just like pushes it down into the ground into the vehicles this is why i think that th- that's a really intelligent move on her part because those vehicles there is no way they could follow her yeah but i will call bullshit on this part how many people walked in with that general and how many people did you see at the end quite a few walked in well, quite a few walked in and quite a few survived because that was a that was a very, that scene was very reminiscent of like a star wars Darth Vader scene because yeah. uh, the, the guys on, on uh, the side that were protecting Eleven couldn't hit shit. They hit maybe like one or two people. But they were getting their ass kicked. And then and this is another thing. Let me get to this. Was it the military versus the military? Yes, yes it was. Okay, because at one point I'm like, it, it says MP on their helmets. I'm like, this is like two different branches? What's going on here? Like, or is is America against America in this? I wasn't sure what was going on on that. Th- that's that's pretty much what it was. I'm pretty sure that it was like a secret government organization versus like no. our standard military who wanted to know what was going yeah. on. Okay. Yeah. I was like, these are MPs, man. What the fuck? They're both getting yeah. paid by the same people. Exactly. Exactly. W- one thing that eleven. Um, came to the realization of before you know the whole escape thing was that for years Hoppe was just using her to try and get Henry out of the upside down oh yeah you know know, Mike and Will and all them they pull up in the van come up give her a big hug and then her collar pops off and it shows Papa you know hitting the button allowing it to pop off and she goes over over to him and you know they have a a few words and it's the goodbye he deserves i'll say that much she she pretty much just refuses to uh forgive him and just walks off let him die he's like begging her like basically i forget what he says exactly but he's like please say you forgive me please say and she doesn't answer him she just gets up and walks off and and they leave it's the send off he deserves, in my opinion. No, I mean I I thought he deserved every little bit of that. Yep. 
I was really hoping like a demigorgon or something would get a hold of him, but bite his head off. He <laughs> died. Well, I mean, you know, he didn't die happily. He, if he was alive after being shot square in his spine and it went through his chest, he was not. He was in a lot of pain. I'll put it that way. Yeah, yeah. And he was still alive when she walked off, I believe. Yeah. I mean, so so we honestly don't know if he's dead or not. Oh, he. I. I'm. I'm. I'm writing him off. He's honestly, if you think about it, story wise, like storytelling wise, he's he served his purpose. And if yeah. season five yeah. is the last season, I guarantee, I, I'm willing to bet you they're not bringing him back. Eleven safe. We got there. She's back with with Will and them, and and but there's that the, we got we got to talk about a scene that's a little before um, they find her, where Will's talking to Mike, and Mike is really freaking out, like saying that you know what you know I. I, I, what if I'm nothing? What if, what if I'm nothing in this situation? And we finally get to see that, that portrait will paint it. Yeah. This heavily portrays something to me and we'll get into that in a second. And it's, it's both beautiful and unnecessary to an extent, but that's just my personal opinion. Cause Mike is telling Will like, you know, I'm not really important. I, L is nothing, but she doesn't even need me to be L. I've never really been a big part of this story. And and Will is basically saying, no, dude, you're the heart of the team. You're, yeah. You're, and he pulls out that that uh, that portrait he paints, and it turns out it's like they're D&D characters fighting a dragon, right? Mm-hmm. And it's really fucking cool. And on his shield is a heart, and he explains it. And Will starts crying, which, like, it's almost like he's coming out in uh, uh, coming out with his feelings to uh, to Mike, was I the only one that thought that? Will seemed like he was kind of trying to say, "Look, I care about you more than you think." Well, the the backstory to that was felt that his friendship with Mike wasn't really there anymore because all he cared all Mike cared about was 11 especially in the first part yes and Mike said you and I have always been friends and we will always be friends see i i saw it as almost like he was coming out like with his feelings well see to, to me what what i got from this season was will was in love with 11 oh see I didn't. I got. He was in love with Mike. I think he was in love with. But I. I can also see your point of view. Um, and I. I think his his emotions with that were, you know, he trying to build his friend up because is, you know, Mike doesn't feel that Eleven even needs him. I think that Will, his as a character, has been cut out of the spotlight for a while. Yeah. I the season 1 he had to be because of course he was in the upside down. Season 2 like he was kind of a big part of it but he still wasn't he was just like the vec uh, not the vecna but the uh the upside down generator like the guy who knows where everything's at. Season 3 yeah. he was the jealous guy who just didn't want like he wanted everything to be back to he wanted to be a kid again cuz he didn't get a chance to be a kid. And in yeah. season 4 he was just like the friend that wasn't acknowledged because he didn't get to see his friend for a while. Yeah. But I'm thinking this is going to be Will's big spot. He's I think that he's in love with Mike. I, I and I say it's I say it's unnecessary because it reminds me of Frodo and Samwise. Like how yeah. all the fans are like, "Oh, they could be gay. That's cool. I have nothing wrong with that, but it doesn't need to happen. You can just be friends." On top of that, friendship could be magical like like just I, if something really really went wrong with you and I was really upset about it, I would probably do the same thing. And I would too, yeah. Yeah, so, like, and then that's what that's where I think because there, there's another scene later on where I think it also hints to what I'm saying. Uh, whether and okay. I'll and okay. I will say this, I, I see that now. and I will say this, if Will turns out to be homosexual, I don't care. I don't. I really don't. I I just don't think it's necessary for the story or for Will's character. I think that Will yeah. is good on his own. I think that if it's the case, I'll still love them. I love these characters no matter what, dude. They're like family. I just can't. I, I, I'll, I, what? Why are you looking at me like that? 
I was agreeing with you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you, had, you had a very judgy look on your face. But um, I, I love them so much that I don't care if that turns out to be the case. I'm just saying it's not necessary. We already have a, we already we've already met and have a homosexual uh, Robin, who's fucking perfect. I love that character. And she in this season she's love struck. I don't think we mentioned that uh, she's love struck because she wants to get with some chick that obviously at some point doesn't seem like she's interested in her. But but that's that's just a side thing. Um, but anyway, that that scene in the car I felt like it needed to be talked about because Will really is bringing up Mike, like you said. Yeah. Uh, he's kind of he's kind of telling him, look, dude, you are important. You are the heart of this team. Without you, things don't happen. And it that of course comes comes into play later on. The group back in Hawkins comes up with this multi part plan. Come up with this plan to break up into groups and each group has their own task that needs to be done. So like Max, Lucas and Erica are going into the Creel house and that's where Max is going to distract uh, Vecna. Well, basically be bait. Before that, they ended up buying a lot of fucking guns and a lot of, like... Oh, yeah, a lot They went to, like, this redneck place and bought, like, a bunch of guns and a bunch of, like, kerosene and stuff to make weapons and, and uh, firebombs. They found... they one point, they found the, uh, the basketball uh, guy... He was buying a big ass fucking look like a six shooter Magnum, three fifty seven. Three fifty seven, yes. But he was buying that shit, and uh, it was kind of awkward. They ended up getting out without a fight, thank God. But he saw them. Yeah. And uh, so, so that happened before the plan was actually put into place. So there's there's a scene where they're putting together fire bombs and they're talking and. You know, it's a typical, like, pre- prepared scene. I think that uh, Dustin and Eddie have this really cool moment in that scene. Where yeah. They're, and where they're, they're, go ahead. Their, uh, their part of the mission was distract the gigantic swarm of um, the upside-down bats. Yeah. Um, so that the rest of the group can make it to uh, the Creel house in the upside down because those things were literally guarding the house in the upside down yeah. or yeah. yeah you know then it cuts a, away to you know 11 mike will jonathan and argyle and they're trying to figure out how to get back well because you know they're not going to make it back to hawkins by the time all this goes down in fact that and episode's called will, piggyback you know, yeah so she uh 11 says that she needs to make an isolation tank. So with Argyle being, you know, a pizza delivery guy for surfer boy pizza. And those motherfuckers are all family. Yeah. They go to a surfer boy pizza there in uh, Nevada and, you know, coax the guy that's closing up the shop with, you know, California weed <laughs> what they call it? What was the name of it? It had some crazy ass name. I don't remember, but it sounded delicious. Yeah, it sounded fucking amazing. Give me some of that. They end up the pizza, uh, the pizza dough freezer. They end up emptying all that, filling it full of water, and filling it full of six hundred pounds of salt, yeah. so that um, Eleven can use it as an isolation chamber, so that she can piggyback into Max's mind. Yeah, so she can so she can literally uh, face Vecna inside Max's head. This is where we're getting to the part where I was talking about earlier. First, before that, though, uh, Argyle's making pizza. He's doing what he does best, man. And he makes pizza with what on it? Pineapple. Pineapple. And he serves it to Mike and L. and L loves it. And he's like, try it before you deny it, man. And like and like the whole time, Mike's like, "Fuck, that sounds disgusting. That sounds disgusting." And and while that's you happening, on pizza. <laughs> but and you so, do. So what we, you know what? It's good. But while that's happening, uh, 
Will and his brother John are and they're mixing the tank and they're talking and this is what I was talking about earlier. Jonathan looks at Will and he could tell something's wrong with him. And he goes, you know what? No matter we, he tells he tells a story about when they were kids. Like yeah, he, that's when you used to need me. You know, when when you were younger, you used to come to me all the time. Why don't you do that anymore? And he's like, I don't know. I don't know. He says, you know, no matter what and how, or no matter what or or who you become, I'm gonna. I love you. You're my brother. And this yeah. is and this is where I'm like. That is strongly hinting. That he's saying you can come out of the closet, man. It's cool. And it, it, and. Will didn't really confirm nor deny it. So yeah. it's, it's hard to tell. And that's okay. Um, I get it. It's the 80s. The 80s was really bad, really judgy, a really judgy time. They're doing that. And it, there's this really, like, there's a really good brother brother scene between the two of them. You know, he talks about uh, how how he used to come to him. He had this, this, this Lego up his nose. And he's like, I had to perform surgery on you. And it was really right, funny. <laughs> yeah, it was really funny. And so after that, the big scene happens where where everything starts to come into play. Now, before we get into that, we got to talk about what's happening with Hopper. Yeah. So the person that, that they talked to with their phone call to America was supposed to be um, Owens. Mm-hmm. But because he was, you know, off the grid and all that, his his associate who would whatever whatever some, some female bureaucrat says you know the from what we've gathered the kids have discovered this discovered that you know this is what they're going to be doing puts them up to speed on what's going on with the upside down hopper realizes that there must be an opening at the prison because of those part all the demi organs and demi dogs that they have there at the prison. Well, before they broke out, remember they saw that big particle thing that looked like it could have been a portal, but it wasn't a portal. It was like the mm-hmm. shadow, as they called it. Yeah. So Hopper decides that they need to go back in and kill those things. Kill those things to help the kids. To weaken whatever's going on. They're thinking that if they do that, because everything's hive minded, right? Yeah. So if they did that, they can actually maybe distract it, whatever's going on long enough, because they have no idea about Vecna. They have no idea about yeah. what's going on exactly. They just know that they're go- the kids are going back in and they're doing their thing. They're being heroes like they usually do. So they got to break back into the fucking prison. Breaking in was easier than getting out. I'll put it that way. Oh, yeah. Because by the time they got back in, they come up with this elaborate plan. They got a flamethrower and all this. Hopper was going to be doing one thing. Joyce was going to be doing another. Antonov was going to be getting uh, Yuri on the ball to fix the chopper for their extra. Because Yuri was sabotaging. He was sabotaging shit because he didn't really want to do anything. He didn't think. He was seeing shit as America versus Russia. Yeah. Until Yuri set him straight. Yeah. Which happened while they were breaking in. The, the yeah. idea, the, the plan that Grizz is talking about was that uh, one of them was going to be the barbecue expert. Uh, Murray. Murray was going to be the barbecue expert. Uh, Joyce was going to be in charge of locking them into the... She was the jailer. And, yeah. And he was the and bait, and Hopper was the Hopper bait. Hopper was the bait. So, and the whole idea was to get him back into that uh, arena. Hopper's going out to do his thing. This is where the plan goes into motion. Everything's going on inside the inside out. The upside down. <laughs> what different? No different. We have Max inside the Creel house. You know, they're everyone's getting into place. Uh, you got you got Dustin and uh, Eddie, Eddie in the upside down, getting ready to be there. They they're just prepping shit at the the trailer park so that they can be proper um, distractions. It leads to Erica outside on like a jungle gym looking thing shaped like a rocket uh, with a with a flashlight. And they're just flashing each other. Uh, her and her brother are giving each other Morse signals, code. Morse code or just signals through through the window. Uh, so they're following Vecna's signal with lights because just like anything else in the upside down. Bug zappers. Bug, yeah, they, they shit gets a little brighter when you're closer to something that's a ghost or whatever, what have you. Um, and so it ends with more or less Max is trying to goad Vecna into killing her. 
And there's a scene where she's she's there there it leads her to the attic. She sits down and she starts kind of like coming clean and the whole plan is once she goes once he goes into her head she's going to find a happy thought and be safe. Um that's how she was explaining. And before that though there was this really good scene between her and Lucas mm-hmm. where they're not talking, they're writing they're writing on this paper and he asks he basically asks her out on a date. If they were writing everything down is because they didn't Vecna to hear that they were in the house. Yeah, they didn't want the they didn't want him to know the plan as well. He said the reason that he asked her out on a date is because they had broken up um in between seasons. Mm-hmm. You know, because she was you know, still really distraught over, you know, the death of Billy, still yeah. trying to cope with all that. And, well, in fact, that's how Vecna you know. was that was her darkness. That's how Vecna mm-hmm. was getting her. That was a real kind of a, a light in the darkness mm-hmm. of them being able to you know, reconnect. It felt good that, that they could do it because that, the, like the dark side of her, like the depression she was going through, you could tell that that was, that was the big block between those two. You can tell they cared about each other, you know, even in, even in the last part the first part of it, he was, he kept telling her, look, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Like I'm, I'm, I'm always gonna be here, and she was just doing what depression does, and she was just like, "No, you're not," or "I'm not gonna let you," or what, what have you. So this, this particular scene was really good on <coughs> seeing them kind of, they're joking around, kind of being back to the Lucas and Max that we knew. So she goes and she gets ready, and you know she starts saying, "I'm here, come get me." Well, she starts talking about Billy and she's you know, like, what, what really is bothering her, right? She says, you know, Billy was so bad to me. He was such a, a, a bad brother that I started wishing that he'd die. All of a sudden, Lucas turns to her and starts like, maybe you should die. If that's how you believe, you know, like, if that's what you think. And at that point, I'm like, he's got her. Vecna's got her because Lucas wouldn't say that, especially after what we just saw. And turns out, guess what? It was Vecna. It was Vecna. So he starts chasing her. Lucas sees that that's happening and gives her the signal, gives his sister the signal through the window. So we, the first thing that needs to happen is, of course, Eddie and Dustin. One of the most iconic moments of this fucking season, dude. They put on a tenacious D style freaking performance like never before. In this, with the song, with a with this, the Metallica song, no less. How much? What? How? I don't know how much they paid Metallica, or if Metallica, because Metallica's they keep their shit close. I don't know how much Netflix paid them. I'm glad they did because the song they used was perfect. It was Master of Puppets. He was on the roof of that thing, pulling off like Eddie was on the roof, just doing the best fucking like. Ah, oh, it was so good. Because he played electric guitar Mm -hmm. he was a musician they they hooked up the freaking speakers and everything and he was just going to town and the whole time dustin's like 20 seconds and they they get the attention of the the demi birds or demi fucking bats whatever you want to call them and so like he just does this song and a bunch of other shit's going on too but at, at, at this point dustin and fucking and fucking eddie are the star of the show right there i'm gonna put it this way after this scene, it's like the show hits you with event after event after event and doesn't give you time to breathe. Uh, I had talked to a friend of mine and she put it the same way. Like, once, and I, I'm not skipping ahead, I'm just saying this. Once all that's over with, it fades to black and you actually go, holy shit. Give me a second because this, the, the whole concert scene was just fucking amazing. Eddie is a fucking awesome guy. And let me give you a little backstory on Eddie. He's a badass chicken. I say, I say chicken because he's never really done anything chance in his life. He's role played. He's gone out and he's a great GM. And this was his year to graduate high school. Because we, as we said in the last, the last episode, he was held back a few times. At this point... Steve, Robin, and Nancy are infiltrating the house. Well, they didn't realize it was going to be harder than it was because there were fucking vines all over the, the, past the front door everywhere. Meanwhile, 
that's happening. We have uh, Hopper and them getting ready to get the fucking uh, Demi Dog's attention because it's a hive mind. If he gets one attention, he's gonna get all their attention. And meanwhile, we have going on with fucking L going. And at that point, she's already in um, Max's head. She piggybacked. Vecna has control of Max. She she sees Billy. And, you know, kind of brings up all that emotion thing again. And she's trying to keep Vecna distracted. Goes into, like, the the auditorium or whatever. And it's all set up for, like, a prom or or, or whatever. It was her happy memory when, I guess, they went to the yeah. prom or something in, like, the last yeah. season. She's there. He pops up there behind her and uh, kind of throws her around a bit and then gets her up against the wall and you know his whole thing is once he puts his hand on the person's head they levitate you know that's when he lifts them up and you know they get all vecnified so as soon as as soon as uh you know he kind of lifts her up onto the wall he can't move and just kind of goes back into the middle of the room just like he did Chrissy and the school paper editor and the guy in the lake and it just kind of stuck there max falls to the ground and and in walks 11 like a badass she kind of turns him in the air and he goes you and then she just starts throwing his ass around right into the bleachers like crash through the bleachers through the wall and yeah you know max she goes up to max and Max is like, how is this real? And, are you real? Like, are you in my head? Yeah. While that's going on, while Vecna's, you know, literally in the bleachers, Dustin and Eddie finish their concert. They get down into the trailer they for, and the bats start getting in. They get in through the vents. They didn't think about the vents. Yeah. So they kill quite a few of them, but I mean, it's like a giant swarm of demi bats. Yeah. Well, they get they and, they block one of the entrances, and then they like, is there any other vents? And then there's one under the ground, or one in, in the floor at one point, right? Uh, the and one like, in the, the back bedroom. bedroom. Yeah, in the bedroom, yeah. and then they all come in that way, and it's too late. They yeah. can't stop them. So, Eddie decides that he needs to continue the distraction. You now, runs out the door, jumps on a bike, takes off riding, and the whole swarm starts coming at him. Well, there's a scene before that where he where it, it goes back. He he remembers all the times he ran. He remembers all the mm-hmm. times that like he. There's even a part where he's like, "We're not heroes," and he, he you know, he remembered saying that to like Nancy, and he, he and at this point, Dustin had already gone through the portal back to the other world, and and he refused to. And so he he pulled down that little the fucking little setup they had and took away the uh uh. The mattress the way that was for on the floor. To get back through. Yeah. yeah. So he's like, okay, and Dustin's like, no, don't do it, don't do it. I don't care what you're thinking. Don't fucking do it. And he runs out the door, like you said, and gets on that bike and basically herds him into a different area. He kites him about a block or two away. Jumps off the bike, and you know he, they had made like swords and stuff, and like a spear and like a shield. Shields that have spikes through them, and he uh, comes to that realization: I'm not running this time turns to fight this swarm of bats. And I mean, it was an epic battle. He was holding his own. It was very d and was Especially at first, it was very d and He was kicking their ass. He was doing a good job. And there's a part where they're just swarming around him, like almost like a vortex. That's when everything starts to go bad story-wise. Like yeah. for everyone. Dustin not having a safe way back through the portal wanting to save Eddie just jumps through the portal and, you know, messes up his leg. Yeah. Hobbling his way out of the trailer and sees the this swarm of bats is just destroying Eddie. And while this is going on, everybody in the house, Steve, Nancy, and Robin, they're like getting choked. up against the wall, being choked out by the vines. And about this time, L is starting to lose to Vecna. Vecna's literally kicking her ass. 
Like she came in strong, but then she found out he was stronger, and which is one of the things they warned her about. So everything's going bad for everybody. I mean, even even Hopper is getting attacked by the the demi the demi dog ca- catches Hopper and is on top of him, and is about to rip his face. And is off. about to rip his face off. At one point, um, Vecna tells L, "I'm going to kill her, and you're going to watch." And he's talking about Max. And he puts he puts L in his little world where everything's floating and all disfigured to the house, in his head. Mm. He brings uh, uh, Max in there and puts her. And of course, you see all on the pillars all his trophies from his last kills. In the meantime, back in the attic of his house, in the real world, is Lucas and Max. While Max is still, you know, sitting there, all possessed in the trance the basketball guy shows up uh, with one of his buddies. His buddy ends up tackling Erica. Which, was it me or was that scene kind of weird? Yeah, it, it was. Not like, like I, I had a friend tell me it was kind of rapey, but I didn't see it as rapey. I just saw it as bully Like, he was bullying that girl. Like, yeah. like they were dicks. And that's why I say, like, it's very Moby Dick in that way where they're, they just don't, there's no right or wrong. They just got to get this cult in their head. Yeah, the basketball captain sneaks up into the attic and pulls his gun on Lucas. And now he's believing that Lucas is the one that has been killing everybody. Yeah, he's telling Lucas the whole time, I don't know what you're doing with her, but get her out of that. Like, wake her up. And Lucas is like, I can't. Yeah, if you wake her up now, she will die. We will all die. Mm -hmm. And... So then they get into a big old fight. A cool uh, tussle. like Yeah. And Lucas ends up tackling him, knocking the gun away from him. And... But he, the, but the, the the basketball captain ends up, he starts beating the shit out of Lucas. And again, this is everything's going wrong at the same time for everybody. In real life at the pizza parlor, Will and all those guys are seeing Elle. She's getting her ass kicked. She's bleeding. She's acting really messed up uh, in real life while she's in... in She's piggybacking in uh, Max's head. Mike decides to talk to her. Like Will's like, talk to her. Tell her, tell her, tell her how you feel. And so Mike's telling her, you know, that I don't tell you enough. I I love you. Da 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 da. And this is where shit kind of turns around. The power of love compels you. Which uh, in in some movies that is so dumb, but in this, like this show, like it actually works. I will so say. Good. So the way, good. And you because of course they can hear. She can hear them where she's at. So something happens, and there's a there's a few flashbacks she has, and there's stuff going on in her head, and she basically controls those vines until and makes them go away, right? Like they they yeah. untangle, and then she proceeds to beat the ever living fuck out of Vecna in uh, in in his head. Well, unfortunately, by that time, Max was already lifted up, and one of her her arms and legs were broken. <laughs> that was you know. One of the bad things. Uh, but she beats the ever-living fuck out of Vecna. And while this is happening, Hopper gets saved by what's his, by Will's mom. What's her name? Joyce. Joyce. By Joyce. And then they, they lead all of them to whatever, and they get, they get barbecue. They barbecue all the fucking creatures, which, of course, makes Vecna weakened because hive mind. Ella's is just beating the shit out of him. And he, at this point... They're we- he's weak. They're weakened, so all the shit. All of the bats that were around Eddie. Oh yeah, they just fell. They died. They just fall out of the sky. And the- it's not too that a movie or a show um, does it right. And one thing that Wild and I can both agree on is that soup. Uh, Stranger Things did it right. Supernatural did it right too, but that's a whole other podcast. Yeah, yeah. it's a very emotional scene after the bats uh, fall out of the sky. Dustin, you know, hobbles over to Eddie, who is just completely decimated. Face tore open, chest and abdomen tore open, bleeding out. I didn't run away. He he just talks to Dustin, and it's. Dustin's like, you know, we'll we'll get we'll get you hospital. help. We'll get you help. We'll get you to a hospital. Eddie just says, "I didn't run." This is my year. 
this is my year this is the year that I graduate this is my year and I cried not a dry eye that at that point I was holding back tears I didn't cry but I was holding back tears like I was close that point if you weren't like if you didn't feel the feels then you have no soul right let me go on to say this about all the actors in Stranger Things. Every time someone teared up, it was it felt real. Yeah. That scene where Eddie Pat or Eddie died was one of the saddest scenes. I haven't been that sad in a show since I seen Bobby die in Supernatural. Yeah. And that was that's saying something. Like now I think he's gonna come back, but we'll get to that later. Like I said, when all this shit happens, it's like, ha- it's like event, 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 event. You don't get time to breathe. All this shit happens at once, and so you're just going there like it's like getting punched in multiple directions. Like, fuck, this happened. Fuck, fucking Eddie. Fuck, you know this is what's going on with 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 Robin and the gang. Oh shit, this is what's going on with Hopper. All this shit's going on bad at once, man. And the way they tell it, and the way the story's going, and the way all these multiple shits going on, and the way they just cut away. Is mass, it's a masterpiece. Stranger Things has not let us down for one season. Oops. It's been good since the very beginning. And these are all actors, like the kids, are all actors and actresses that, like, I never saw them since before this. There's some acting chops there, you know? And they're, these, these kids are going to go on to do great things after fucking Stranger Things is done. Eddie passes, um... It's very sad. Dustin's his distraught. Te- his tears, dude. Like I felt for him. There's a good. There's a scene where, honestly, half the characters, half the kids are crying at one point in different situations, and you just your heart breaks each time you see it. Uh, the the gang in the, the actual manner, in the upside down. You know, uh, Robin, Nancy, and uh, Steve. They're yeah. going. They're going to go basically find Vecna in his little hidey hole where he hides and, and goes into people's heads. So they go to that area and they basically catch his ass on fire, right? So he goes out of he Molotov goes Molotov cocktails with Molotov cocktails, and he goes out of he goes out of his little thing where where El is at you know where they're fighting, and he goes into like the real world I guess in the upside down, and they're just beating the shit out like Nancy Wheeler is shooting the shit out of him with a sawed off shotgun and they're just throwing fucking Molotovs at him and the whole time we're like die Vic-! I mean everyone watching die Vecna die and they shoot him out the window of the uh, of the, the mansion attic. the attic and he falls and you're like oh he's got he's got to be dead while Eleven was getting those vines off of her and he is you know doing his Vecna thing to Max in the attic of his house in the real world Lucas and the basketball guy are watching her raise up and you know watching her break Mm -hmm. her arm and her leg and the moment you see that your first thought is oh she's dead So, uh, Erica ends up, you know, kicking the other basketball guy in the dick, running into the house because, you know, you can hear a couple of the gunshots go off Mm -hmm. before Lucas knocked the gun out of his hand. So she's thinking, oh God, my brother's dead. She comes running up. Doors locked, of course. And, you know, Lucas ends up getting the upper hand and knocking the other basketball guy out. Starts just beating out the shit out of that guy. Knocks him out cold. And once Eleven started beating the shit out of Vecna is when Max fell to the ground. and Another really sad yeah. scene. Lucas runs over to her. She kind of comes to, to a sense. And... That's when Erica finally gets up to the attic and sees, you know, what had happened. All Lucas can say is, call 911, get an ambulance, we need help. Dude, like, I can't, I can't compliment these actors enough. 
Especially the young ones, because God damn it. Erica runs off to go call 911. At this time, Eleven had beaten the dog shit out of Vecna. So Eleven, still being in Max's mind, you know, walks up and, you know, Lucas is there holding her mangled body. And she's saying that she's sorry. She doesn't want to die. She feels like it's her fault, almost. Yeah. It's to the point to where even Eleven's crying. Max dies. Max, we see Max, like, die. And then, so, in the Upside Down, Robin and the gang go down to check on Vecna. Well, guess what? He's gone. He's gone. His body's gone. And he kept saying, this will never be over until the world is mine. Mm hmm. Max dies. And Eleven feels responsible for not being able to protect her. So places her hand on her, and that's whenever it, it cuts. Yeah. If you remember, the clock tolls four times. And each place where the four people died, the upside down starts to open. During all this sad time, because it started opening there, right there where she was. Yeah. Well, good thing Lucas, Lucas moved. Girl. Moved, yeah. Good yeah. thing he moved moved, moved Max because and we saw what happened to the, the, ba- the basketball guy. Yeah. It tore his ass in too. The crack starts opening up and just... And goes all the way through town because, you know, in the town, there's four different corners where the four people were killed. And those cracks just start merging towards the middle, destroying houses, destroying buildings. Well, then it cuts to Nancy and Steve and Robin sitting on the back of the car in their driveway. You know, it shows the the news saying that this was a uh, natural disaster and that some people are still saying that it's caused by devil worship this hellfire club led by Eddie yeah who is missing <sighs> and still being looked for by law enforcement Mike's mom comes out and goes who ordered pizza as the pizza van pulls in and they all get out and they see Eleven and <clears throat> they go give her a hug and all that. Eleven asked where Lucas and Max were. And Dustin said, oh, you don't know. So then they end up going to the hospital where Max is in a comatose state. You know, she's got you know, pretty much her entire body cast it up. And Eleven gives Lucas a hug, and then walks over and sits on the bed next to Max and kind of grabs her hand and goes to go into her mind. But when she goes into her mind, it's there's, black. There's nothing there. It's just that black, well, watery substance there. on the ground. It's just all around her. And she's calling for her. There's no answer. And a lot of people are leaving Hawkins, obviously, because of all this shit. Um, but before that, I, I really don't want to skip this part. Dustin finds Eddie's uncle. They're all helping out at, at, yeah, a, at the, the high school the high gym, school. where it's kind of like a a safe shelter. Yeah, they're 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 bringing in like people who lost their homes and stuff. Uh, Eddie's uncle is taking down one of the one of the missing posters that someone had scribbled like horns and like a devil on uh, Eddie's Eddie's picture. And he's replacing it with a fresh one. And another heartbreaking moment. Um, Dustin proceeds to tell Eddie's, Eddie's uncle that Eddie died like a hero. Uh, more or less. He couldn't tell him, you know, we were in the upside down. He died there. He just said that I was with him until the, the last moment. And that he worry he was more worried about everyone else than himself. 
and, and he gave him the the he gave him like the pick that was on his it was like a guitar pick that was on a necklace yeah. it was on a chain and uh it was just really emotional um and i think that's what his uncle needed to hear yeah the group gets together and they go to yeah. they go to hopper's cabin they're starting to kind of clean it up and fix it up because they know that the u.s military after 11 and they're wanting to hide her mm-hmm. as they're they're cleaning up 11 goes into her room and you know finds this old coke bottle that spin the bottle she starts reminiscing of them playing uh you know like spin the bottle with the guys are in the living room and everything and they hear a car pull up so they look out and they see that it's you know a military a black car and they immediately think government mm-hmm. and then it cuts back to 11 being in a room and she can hear footsteps and the door opens and when she looks up it's hopper happy reunion and they have their their happy reunion and everything and they end up going outside there's all the hugs and all that everyone kind and, of fills each other in and talks and and, you know, and then in. uh dustin looks at will and he's just kind of well you, you see know, the wink. back of will's neck and he reaches back and like the hair is standing up look like goosebumps is what i'm saying and uh he goes Beckman is still here they all kind of turn as there's like this big like storm that they can see kind of just materializing out of nowhere and over. ash yeah. coming from the sky yeah. yeah and ash so they start walking out and they go out you know through the trees and out into this field and they can see kind of what looks like the mind flare it, lo- it was really cool. Um, yeah. So, and that's about where it ends. Like, it, it's, that's season five, apparently. Yep. Is, uh, it's going to be in the real world, and it's going to be a battle at Hawkins. Um, I think, I personally think Eddie's coming back. He disagrees with me. But this is my reasoning, okay? My reasoning is, worst things have happened to people, Vecna... Henry, especially when he first went into the uh, the Upside Down, worse things have happened to him, and he still survived. But he also had powers. Doesn't matter. He's he's Eddie did not. Eddie was a badass. Yeah. And in the world, and my big reasoning is that the rules in the Upside Down are different. Yeah. So I mean, I could be wrong. I could be one of those guys because there's a lot of people online right now going. No, no way, Eddie. And I'm one of them. Ed, there's no way Eddie's dead. There's no way. I think I think he did die, but I think that the rules of the Upside Down are going to apply. And we're going to see him come back. You heard it here first. We're going to see him come back in Season 5 while they're in the Upside Down and shit is dire. And he's going to come out with that guitar and he's going to save the fucking day. That would be pretty bitching. It would be. While he's playing Metallica! <laughs> I, I know that there's a lot of people that are pissed off that and I just found out about this today, and I'm I'm, I'm gonna have, go on a little tangent. There, you know that there's people online that are angry that they brought Max back. Yeah. Well, so in some cases I understand because they say this is Lucas's time to shine. Like Lucas could have started singing, uh, the song. Like to get her to snap out of it, right? But what if that worked? Because it's not the same. You know, I that's a whole different story. But they're they're saying that it's Lucas's time to shine. I think that the way the story is now, as sad as it was, it wouldn't have been as epic if things didn't happen in the order they happen. Exactly. So those people like complaining that she came back. Wait till next season. I guarantee you, there's a reason for it. Exactly. So wait before you start bitching. Why, why do we have to have naysayers out there, man? Like, I get it. Sometimes I'm one of them, but it, it's only if something's truly shitty. I have yet to see anything that's shitty on fucking Stranger Things, dude. Stranger Things is a fucking 10 out of 10. 
Hands down. They took two songs from the 80s and made them popular again. Not saying that Master of Puppets never went out of popularity uh, before people are out there going to get mad and send us emails and death threats. But, like, this opens up a new realm of music for the newer generation. Yep. This also counts for the, uh, God damn it, the going down the hill song, whatever the fuck. Running up the hill? <laughs> yeah, running up the hill. Uh, <laughs> well, fuck you! And now you can't get on TikTok without hearing it on anyone. Even people that don't have nothing to do with Stranger Things, that shit's in the background. And it's a good song, well placed in a show. And we didn't even talk about the Journey song that they remixed. Right. I'm excited to see season five. Um, I'm going to be sad to see that that's the last season. But, I mean, how much more can these kids take? We can't we're, we can't just keep them till they're 30 in real life and be like, oh, Stranger Things, season 12. It's just not going to work. Um, some of them already moved on to the Ghostbusters. What did you guys think? Were you just as mind blown at this, at this as we were? Like, everyone I've talked to said the same thing. I've had yeah. conversations at great length with a lot of people about season four of, of Stranger Things. I just haven't talked to this guy about it too much because we were waiting for this. We know that there's going to be people saying, oh, well, you didn't cover this. You didn't cover this. You didn't cover that. Uh, yeah, you're, you're right. We, we didn't. We didn't cover every single second of the entire season. Well, we can't. We'd be here f- for fucking weeks. Yeah. I mean, I would love, as much as I'd love to sit here and analyze every single second, if you're worried about that, go watch the show again yourself. Or watch it. Yep. Because honestly, like, yeah, we give spoilers. We warn we give spoilers. But we still want people to have, you know, those people that we're talking about it, to go back and watch it and and show it the love it deserves. The series is... (laughs) It's just phenomenal. Uh, If you enjoyed... And you lasted through both of our episodes of covering Stranger Things Season 4. Uh, obviously, you like coming back for a contact. By all means, leave a like. Leave a comment if you want. Good, bad, indifferent. And, you know, it doesn't cost anything to hit that subscribe button. <laughs> or the bell. <laughs> Hey, he's right. It doesn't cost anything, and what it does is it it helps us. It also shows that you guys are interested in what we do. Hell, even you know what? You leave leave some comments in that uh, comment section. Let us know what you want us to talk about next, or give us a call. We have a phone number. Okay. Five five nine 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 seven six eight zero three. Again, that number is five five nine 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 seven six eight zero three. Call, leave us a message. Let us know what you want us to talk about. What you want us to talk about, what you want us to review, what you want us to eat, what you want us to play. We're here. As long as it's not shit. Tell us not to eat shit, please. Be nice. Be kind, rewind. (laughs) But, alright, nerds, you heard it here first. Maybe second. Depends on who you heard it from first. But uh, we might it might be a while before we do another actual season after this. I've had some real life shit come up to where uh, that's going to kind of get in the way. It's getting in the way of a lot of things. Uh, but uh, we'll keep you posted. We we'll probably we might even do some between season stuff like we're doing here. Uh, there's a lot of things to talk about. I think Bash, uh, the Stampede is getting another anime on Netflix, which eventually we're going to have to talk about. Um, there's a few other shows coming out, like Castlevania. Uh, they're doing an update on that, so maybe we'll get Monster in on that, because I know he loved it. The podcast is going to be on hold. We're trying to come back in October. I don't know if that's going to happen. But with that being said, guys, we're going to go ahead and end the podcast. Once again, we thank you for watching. We thank you for listening. Uh, is there anything else you want to say there, Grizz, before we say adieu to our fellow listeners and lovely watchers? Well, you can follow us on every social media platform at Nerd is the New Sexy Entertainment. N-I-T-N-S-E. 
N I T N S E. Follow us on the social media Twitter, Anchor, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Instagram all the social medias. Uh, there's some certain things on those channels that you won't see on YouTube. Like we do Discord. certain. Discord. Or, yep, Discord. We have a Discord channel, which the link is down there somewhere. Till then, we want you to stay nerdy. And stay sexy. Always. Always.